Hey, what is going on everyone? I'm Wicked and today I'm going to address an issue some of the new developers often encounter while working with the block library. You might find yourself at a moment in time in which your block or qubit state won't update at all. So in this tutorial you'll find out why this happens and exactly how we can fix it. We'll also take a more in-depth look over the equatable package. Before we get started though, make sure you check out the content overview for today's video and its specific timestamps. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So we know from previous tutorials that each block or qubit incorporates a stream of outgoing states. Our state not updating problem translates into a new state from a block or qubit can't be emitted to the stream of outgoing states. The cause of this problem is pretty simple you're probably emitting the same exact state as the previous one. The problem with this is that block library does not allow two identical states to be emitted one after another. You can imagine this rule exists because of optimization techniques. Why would you want to emit two identical states one after another after all? You probably don't want that, but the code you wrote unfortunately translates into that. First and foremost, you need to understand how Dart compares to objects since that's how it also compares to states in order to see if they're equal or not. From the documentation, we find out that two objects are equal if and only if both are the same object. Unfortunately, this may not seem really straightforward and some people misinterpret it. So let's say we have a my class class containing an integer value. Inside the main function, we'll create two instances of this my class object, both having the value set to one. Based on the definition, what do you think this print command will display? You might be tempted to say that they're equal, but they're definitely not. What the definition is trying to say is that the only way we can get through here is when we compare A to A and B to B. Our A and B variables are not the same object, even though it looks like they are from the code, they are different. Therefore, comparing A to B will return a false value. So that's how the default equality operator works inside Dart. But obviously we can override it to compare objects as we want to. We want to compare these two instances to see if they're both instantiated from the same type of class and also to see if they have the same value stored inside them. To do that we can override the equal operator by pressing the control plus period keys right next to the class and then by choosing to generate equality. So what this does is check if the other object we're comparing to is of type my class and if the other object's value is equal to the ones we're comparing to. Now, as you can see, if you run this program, the print sequence displays true. The question now is, do we have to override this equal operator every time we're doing this? Fortunately, no. There's already a really popular Dart package which simplifies things a lot. Its name is equatable. So let's import this package into the pubspec.yaml file and see how it works. All we need to do now is to extend our class from the equatable package and overwrite its props. The props will be a list of all the variables we would want equatable to compare in order to decide the equality of two objects. In our case, we want to pass the value variable to the list of props. If we save and restart our project, you will see that it works exactly as if we would manually overriding the equality operator. Let's test it even further. What if we have different values? It will return false, but let's say we forget to mention the value parameter inside the props file. As you can see, if we compare A and B, we'll still get true, even though the values are different. And that's because equatable will only compare the run type of the objects. Both of them are instances of my class class, thus marking them equal. That's why it's important to pay attention to every scenario on how Dart compares objects. Remember that each state from inside your blocks or qubits is still a class nevertheless. So everything we discussed applies to every state too. Coming back to our state not updating issue, we said that the cause of it is mainly the fact that the state we want to emit is actually equal to the previous emitted one. In order to understand this in more detail, I have created a settings page containing two switch list styles one serving for an eventual app notification feature and the other one serving for an eventual email notification feature. So each of these two tiles can be either on or off depending on the user's preference to receive app or email notifications. 
To manage this page, I have also created a settings qubit, a qubit which will emit a single setting state each time one of the tiles are toggled. The setting state class will contain two boolean class fields, app notifications and email notifications. By default, the initial state of the qubit will be setting state with both of the fields set to false. I have also created two functions inside the qubit. One is triggered when the app notification style is pressed and the other one is triggered when the email notification style is pressed. Both of these two functions will emit a single state according to what the new value of the boolean values will be. Inside the UI, of course, I use Block Builder in order to rebuild the switch list tiles according to the specific values found inside the setting state. I have also added a block listener at the top in which I'm showing a snack bar to see that the values of the setting state correspond to what's shown on the screen. The settings qubit is provided globally above the material app widget, thus being available to all of our screens. Remember, if you have doubts or don't understand a line of code, you can find the source code for this tutorial in the description. And you can also leave me a comment right below the video. Okay, now let's investigate the mistakes some of the users of block library make while coding mistakes that lead to the state not being updated anymore. Let's switch our view to the toggle app notifications method inside settings qubit class. I said that inside this function, we'll have to retrieve the new value of the switch tile from the UI, then emit a setting state containing the app notifications field populated with the new value. Some people may do the following. They would take the current state, which is a setting state, modify its app notification value directly to the new value, subsequently emitting that state again into the stream of emitted states. These two lines of code are really, really, really wrong and must be avoided at all costs. First of all, we're mutating an existing state of our qubit. This is a complete violation of the main principle of block. Remember, for every interaction the user makes with the UI, there should be a new state emitted from the block or qubit. So you should never, but never modify or mutate any already existing state from inside a block or qubit. You can access its value using the state operator right here, but you should never modify it. The biggest problem isn't however this line of code, but rather the next one. It may seem that if you modify the app notifications value above with the new value, the state we're emitting here will be different from the previous one. This is again wrong. Remember that we discussed earlier on how Dart compares objects at the moment. Currently, this emitted state is, to Dart, the same exact state as it was before. Doesn't matter if we modified its value here. It's just like we previously compared A to A and B to B. It will still return true since it's the same object. Due to the previous state being equal to one you're trying to emit, block library won't emit a new state to the stream of states, therefore not updating the UI. This can be noticed if we save and run the project right now. As you can see, if we click the switch tile, nothing happens. In order to fix this, we need to erase these lines of code. I don't know if you noticed, but inside the setting state class, I have this copy with method I generated by clicking control plus period next to the class name. If you're not familiar with this method, what it essentially does is create a new instance of a setting state by copying the entire previous one and then inside the methods parameters you can mention which field you want to modify after it gets created. In our class we can emit a new state by calling state.copyWith which will create a new setting state and copy the content from the previous one to the new state by also setting up the new value of app notifications. As you can see, if we save and run the project right now, the application is going to work perfectly. As I told you before, another mistake users do is that whenever they use the equatable package, they forget to place the values inside the props variable. In our case, if we were to do that, we would have set our setting state to extend equatable. Then let's say we forgot to write the app notifications variable inside the props. This means that Dart will only compare two setting state by checking only the values of email notifications variables. So for example, if only the app notifications variable modifies, Dart won't care about it and will still return true while comparing the two states. So if we save and run this project and click the switch tile for the app notifications feature, it won't do anything since Dart thinks it's the same state as before and won't emit it. 
So please pay attention while working with equatable package and with how Dart compares objects in general. This was the tutorial for today. I hope you like it. If you did, please make sure you smash that like button, share the video with all your colleagues and friends and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any questions, please write me a comment down below and I'll reply as soon as possible. Until the next tutorial, stay safe, take care, Wicked is out, bye bye.